Daily English Conversations Hello, sir. Is there anything I can help you find? Um, uh, I'm just looking, thanks. Need a gift for your girlfriend or wife? No, no, no. I'm just browsing. Thanks anyway. Well, if you need anything, just ask. Um, well, where's the men's shoe department? It's on the third floor. Turn left when you get off the escalator. Thanks. Excuse me, but I'm looking for a gift for my friend. Is it a Chinese New Year's gift or a birthday gift? Well, it's a wedding gift. Oh, I see. Let me guess. Something sexy for the new bride on her first night of marriage? Basically, but I have no idea what to get. She's American and kind of... Well endowed? Don't worry. I have some bras with bigger cup sizes in the back. I just meant that she's got different tastes. What kind of girl is she? She's pretty conservative. Is her fiancé Taiwanese? Yes. How old is he? About 30. He's really outgoing. But why do you ask? Actually, you can take advantage of our new Millennium Woman promotion. Does that include some kind of Love Amy card? Yes. If your Love Amy purchases amount to 10,000 NT or more, you get a VIP card and a 20% discount. Hmm, I'll have to think about it. Okay, just think for a bit. I'll go help another customer. I'll be right back. I want a refund! Yes, miss. What was the problem with your purchase? These pajamas don't fit right. They're too long. Would you like to have them altered? Or would you like a different size? No, I want my money back. I'm sorry, but this was on sale, so I can only give you store credit. Fine. Here's my receipt. I'd better be able to use this anywhere in the store. Of course. Here you are. I'm sorry the pajamas didn't work out for you. I'm sorry to make you wait. What did you decide? Well, I wasn't planning on spending that much money today, so... Trust me, it's worth it. With the Love Amy card, you'll get a 20% discount on everything in the store, every time you shop. Even if an item is on sale? Yes, and there are more bargains. See these pajamas? If you buy a pair now, you'll get this teddy bear as a gift. Oh, it's so cute. Didn't you say your friend was American? Where is she going on her honeymoon? They're going skiing in Colorado. What a coincidence. These pajamas would be perfect to take along on the honeymoon. You're probably right. Oh, what the heck. I'll take it all in maroon like you said. So that will be one teddy, two terry cloth robes, three pairs of satin slippers, and two pairs of pajamas. Does all that come to 10,000 NT? Let me see. Yes, 15,880 NT. After the discount, your total comes to 12,704 NT. Here's your free teddy bear, free panties and your card application. Where do I sign? Right here. And write your address. You'll get the card in the mail within a week. Okay. I know your friend will like the gift set, especially the teddy bear. Well, the teddy bear's for me. Remember to keep your receipt in case your friend needs to make any exchanges. There are no refunds on sale items. Okay, I'd like to have everything gift-wrapped, please. I'll give you the boxes. You can then go to our gift-wrapping department. Is it on this floor? It's on the first floor, to the right of the main entrance. Thank you. Have a nice holiday. You too. Thanks for your help. Hello? Jewelry department. How may I help you? It's me, Allie. 
there's this strange guy who keeps coming around. He's been here three times this week. He's probably a pervert. Just ignore him. He makes me nervous. He looks at me funny, and he never buys anything. Maybe he wants to get something for his girlfriend, but he's embarrassed. I don't know, but he gives me the creeps. Just take it easy. If he starts to bother you, let me know and I'll call security. But what if he knows my name, where I live? Don't get all worked up over him. He's probably harmless. Actually, he's really good looking. Too bad he's a weirdo. You never know. Maybe he's just an innocent, lonely guy. Now he's looking over here. He's coming. Okay, I'll call security. Um, hello again. Are you sure you don't want to make a purchase, sir? I have a question. Um, okay. What is it? Why do people like all this fancy, expensive underwear? What kind of question is that? I'm just curious. I think women are beautiful without this stuff. Uh, yeah, right. I'm sorry, sir. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. What? I was just having a friendly conversation with the lady here. Well, she apparently doesn't think it's so friendly. Let's go. I think there's been a misunderstanding. You'd better cooperate with me, sir, or... Okay. Just give her this for me. What's in the box? Sandy... I think we've made a mistake. What do you mean? It's a cute little teddy bear. How sweet. Maybe he was just a shy guy who had a crush on you. And look what we did to him. Hey, he left me his business card. Wow. Call him tonight. You guys will really have an interesting love story to tell everyone. Here we are, Ryan. This is where we're going to celebrate. It's a KTV palace. I'm glad I brought my platinum card. You won't need it. Stanley, my best man, is going to treat everybody. Where is Stanley? It was his idea to have the bachelor's party at a KTV, wasn't it? If it were up to Stanley, we'd have the wedding in the KTV. He loves to sing. Then I bet he's really good. Well, uh, I'll let you decide that for yourself. He'll be here a little later. Here's our room. This is where we sing? These booths are so comfortable, I think I could fall asleep. Let's order something to eat. What are you in the mood for? I'll have whatever you're having. Okay. How about some spring rolls and squid balls, some pork skins, and some beer? Well, the beer sounds good. Did you know that drinking beer helps you sing better? Are you sure? How do you know? Well, usually people think I'm a terrible singer. But after we all have a few beers, they say I sound a lot better. Well, I heard that if you drink enough beer, you can speak foreign languages better. Then, after a few beers, you'll be singing in Taiwanese? Maybe. Who wants to go first? Alan? Um, I mostly just like to listen. You're the groom. Why don't you go first? Okay. Put on something by the Backstreet Boys. How about As Long As You Love Me? You can pretend you're singing it to your fiancé, Brooke. I'd better not. Brooke hates the Backstreet Boys. Hello. I'm sorry to bother you. This is a complimentary fruit tray. Your food will be ready soon. Wow! It's a fruit sculpture. Your chef is a real artist. Actually, um, I made it myself. You did? Wow! 
Where did you learn? Sorry, but I've got to run. Enjoy your food and ring the service button if you need anything else. Wow! That girl who brings the fruit is really pretty. I wish she wouldn't have rushed off so fast. Hey, it's an English song. Sing with us, Ryan. Tie a yellow ribbon on the old oak tree. Where did you learn that song? Everyone in Taiwan knows it. Come on, sing with us. I'm sorry, but I can't. That's something my grandmother would sing. Well, if you can't sing the English songs, then we're going to have to teach you a Taiwanese song. I don't think I've had enough beer yet. That's okay. We'll help you. All you have to do is say "Ho da la" when we raise our beer glasses. "O ta la." Try it again. "Ho da la." "Ho ta la." Are you still hungry, Ryan? How about some more squid balls? Squid balls? How about some more fruit? Wow, you really like fruit, huh? You've already had three plates. Yeah, it's funny. I usually don't ever eat fruit. Well, whatever suits your fancy. I'll press the service button again. Hello again. Here's another fruit tray for you. Oh, hi again. Hey, the fruit looks different this time. I make each one a little different. It's a way for me to express my creativity. It looks really artistic. How did you learn to do that? Oh, look at your table. I'll help you clear it off. You know, art is something I've always been interested in. Enjoy your food. Bye. Okay, Alan. It's your turn. Are you ready? I really would rather just listen. Isn't there anyone else who wants to sing? Come on! In the two hours we've been here, you haven't sung even one song. I know, but hey, Stanley's here. I've been wanting to hear him sing all night. Well, you asked for it. Why don't you put on an Elvis song for him? He loves the King. I'll put the song at the front of the list. Is Stanley still singing that Elvis song? He's really hogging the mic. If I hear "Love Me Tender" one more time, I think I'm going to go crazy. He sounds like a sick cow. Can we adjust the pitch a little? Maybe he'll sound better in a higher key. I already tried that. Nothing seems to help. Hey, where are you going? Hey, what happened? My song was only halfway through, and it skipped to the next song. I don't know what happened. You canceled the song, didn't you, Jack? No, I didn't really. Then is the machine broken or? Look, Alan has the mic. I thought he only liked to listen. That was before he heard Stanley sing. I guess he couldn't stand it any more, so he decided to give it a try himself. Just do it my way. Hey, Alan has a really good voice. He sounds like Enrique Iglesias, and he can move too. He dances like Ricky Martin. Just my way. Hi again. Can I get you some more fruit? Actually, I don't think I can eat another bite. Okay, I'll go then. Actually, I think we want to pay our bill. If you give me your credit card, I can take care of it for you. 
Here, here, use my card. No, you don't. I should treat my new brother-in-law. Not on my life. I'm the best man, so I pay. Okay, okay, on one condition. What's that? You come back here with me tomorrow, and it's my treat. You've got it. But are we coming back for the music or for the fruit? Ba, 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 Shut ba, up! Ba, ba, da, Billy! Ba, ba, ba. Billy! What? Wow, what's that? It's my new radio earphone. It's so small that I didn't notice it. What were you screaming at me for? Oh, I just wanted you to shut up. You were off key anyway. Let me see that. Okay, just grab it right out of my hands. What a cool see-through blue. How do you wear this thing? That piece fits onto your ear. It hooks right on. And you just put the other one in your other ear. How do I turn it on? See here? On and off. Press this button to change the stations. Cool. It's all FM. How do I adjust the volume? Press here. There are only two settings. I'm a genie in a bottle, baby. Jen! You gotta rub me the right way. Jen! Talk about off-key. Wedding rings! Oh, no. Aren't they cool? I like the settings. Jen, is there someone you're not telling me about? No. I just like looking at wedding rings, okay? Women are such dreamers. These are specially designed for the year 2000. Everything is now. I'm kind of sick of it. Each ring has three small diamonds inside the band. Ooh, one for each of the zeros in 2000. Wow. Stop making fun of me. So find a guy to marry and you can get one. I don't need a guy to buy a wedding ring. Oh, I see. You're going to wear one and pretend you are married to try to attract guys. Maybe. That's how some guys get girls. But I don't think any guy will be stupid enough to... Put it on for me. Okay, but this doesn't mean... It's a perfect fit! Okay, now take it off and let's go. Oh no! I can't get it off! Don't tell me we're still cursed. Are you ready to go to the mall? Yeah. Dig my new pants? Copycat. What do you mean? You went out and bought khakis, too. No. Mine are a soft brown. Yours are khaki. Whatever. Besides, yours don't have side pockets like mine. Cool. They're big. What have you got in there? Just the necessities. A flashlight, pocket knife. Are you planning a trip to the outback? No, but you never know when you'll need a flashlight. Well, my pants are very slimming. They're capris. Uh, that's Greek to me. That means they have tapered legs. Well, mine are baggy. They're the kind of pants you can lounge around in. Mine are, too. So maybe we shouldn't go out after all. Yeah, let's just lounge around. <sighs> I'm beat. What happened to you? You look like you got hit by a tornado. I just got back from fighting the crowds. You mean at the mall? Was there a sale? Yeah, for five minutes, everything was half off. It was total chaos. Cool. Grabbing, pushing, and shoving. So what did you get? It's all in the bag. What's this? Essential oil? Wow, this stuff is expensive. I need that to relax. I'm going to put a few drops in my bath water. How is oil supposed to make you relax? They all have essence of flowers in them. Mmm, they smell nice. When you smell them, they affect your nervous system. 
I thought you were supposed to put them in some kind of burner with a candle. You can do that too. Both methods have a healing effect. So what's your illness? Shopping fever? Saleitis? Ha ha! I'm just fatigued. And tomorrow is a big day. What's tomorrow? More sales! Gross! What are you doing to yourself? Chill. I'm just curling my eyelashes. It looks like some kind of primitive form of torture. You're such a wimp. You're afraid of an eyelash curler. Well, you might pinch your eyelid or lose an eyeball. It just makes my eyelashes curl upwards. What for? That way they look longer. Now what are you doing? Putting on mascara. Nasty. You better not rub your eyes. I won't. And you'd better not cry or you'll have black streaks running down your face. My mascara's waterproof. Oh, how high class. So you just wear it forever? No. There's makeup remover for waterproof mascara. Is it dry yet? Yep. See how long and curly my lashes are? They look fake. Thanks. What are you doing? Checking the to-do list for the wedding? Yep. There's still so much to do. So let's start by checking off what we've already done. Did you reconfirm the plane reservations for all the Taiwanese guests? Not yet. I was busy getting that videographer who films stuff for the net. Cool. I can't believe he agreed to go all the way to Dallas with us. Hey, we're paying for his ticket. <sighs> There's so much to do and so little time. I know. Did your mom double check on the church reservations? Yes. We're going to be married in my hometown church the first minute of the new millennium. Okay. And what about the buffet and the cake? Did your mom call the caterer? All set. And we're having a red bean cake and dim sum for the Taiwanese guests, just like your mom wanted. Great. She'll be so happy. So your mom can stop nagging you now. Trust me. She'll keep nagging. She thinks something will go wrong. Don't tell me she's been listening to the fortune teller again. You guessed it. She says we have to get married on January 2nd, or we'll have bad luck. The day we choose to get married could never be an unlucky day. My mom just wants everything to be perfect for us. Hey, ask your mom for more old pictures, okay? Can't it wait? She's still angry that we sent email wedding invitations. But we saved your parents so much money. I know. And they're spending enough on the plane tickets to Texas. Speaking of plane tickets, don't forget to check on the reservations. Okay. How's the bride-to-be? Tired and stressed. This wedding is giving me a headache. Just relax. With me as your maid of honor, everything will be fine. I'm worried that everything will be chaotic. Hey, I'm the tour guide. I'll take care of the Taiwanese guests. You're going to have to tell them what to do in church, what everything means. I will. Don't worry. So, got any more ideas for the website? Well, since we're collecting gifts instead of red envelopes, I made a for guests only gift chat room. But we registered at Macy's. People can just buy gifts there. The Taiwanese won't have time to buy gifts in America. The chat room is more convenient. You're right. They can discuss what to get and avoid buying the same things. Or discuss what gifts they could buy together. Any other ideas? We can also put a guest book on the website for people to sign and write comments. And we are going to make a collage for each of us using our baby pictures. Yeah, that will be the best part. Jack hasn't seen yours yet, right? No, he has no idea what a fat little pig I was. Brooke, I have bad news. What? 
I called the airlines to reconfirm the reservations today. Don't you dare tell me that... I'm sorry. I didn't reconfirm in time, and they gave away half of the seats. Well, they should have called you. They said that they did. I've been so busy. And you didn't think to leave them my cell phone? I didn't think there would be a problem. It's the holidays. Everybody knows how hard it is to get tickets. I'm sorry. We're still going. I got reservations for all of us on the 31st. It will be okay. Trust me. Trust you? You can't even handle simple plane reservations. Brooke? Merry Christmas, sweetie. How's your brother enjoying Taiwan? Ryan says he wants to stay. I think he's in love with some girl who designs fruit platters. No! Christmas without him is bad enough. So, honey, do you have cold feet yet? Yeah, especially since Jack didn't take care of the plane reservations. You're not coming? Not until the 31st. So can you change the church reservations? Oh, I'm afraid not. The church is booked until the year 2001. Then where will we have the ceremony? At home? We'll have to. We'll rehearse on the first and have the wedding on the second. I'm sorry, Mom. Don't worry, dear. I'm a great host. Now get some rest. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Mom. I love you. I love you, too. And forgive Jack. He's doing his best. I know. Good night. Brooke, are you still mad? Is your mom mad? No. Mom said that we'll have the wedding at home on the 2nd. So let's hope your mom is right about that being a lucky day. It will be. And today is, too. I just talked to the airlines. They're going to give us back the seats? No. They're giving us discount tickets on a honeymoon package in... Hawaii? My dream honeymoon destination? You got it. We'll fly there directly from Texas. Oh, Jack! That's wonderful! Did everyone fill out their entry permits? Yes, the videographer has already started filming my parents trying to speak English with the flight attendants. Speaking of flight attendants, they keep smiling at me. I wonder why. Look at the video screen. We'll be passing the international dateline in five minutes. It'll be the year 2000. The flight attendants are coming over here. They're carrying bottles of champagne. That's because it's time. Time for what? It's time to make our wedding wish come true. You mean get married now? On the plane? Why not? I've got the rings ready. I don't know what to say, Jack. Hopefully, you'll say yes. The captain is actually introducing the couple here that's about to get married. He says, let's give a toast to the couple in row 24 as they take their wedding vows. Now, when two people profess their love for each other and promise to be married and love each other forever, that's called a wedding vow, a wedding promise. And the verb you use is take. You make a wedding vow, and then you take it with someone, and when you don't obey it, you break it. That's right, and too many men break their wedding vows. Exactly, or maybe even women. But let's talk about vow. You can also use vow when you're making a promise about something else, or commitment about something else. For example... For example, um, like I saw a movie about a child whose father died, and the child vowed that she would be a good child to honor her father. So she made a promise to herself to be a good child, a good student, a good mother, in, in remembrance of her father. So a vow is usually when you're promising something to yourself that you take very seriously. I can also say, today I got a really bad grade on my English test, and I vow from this day forward I will only make good grades in my English class. You'll do a lot of homework and, and improve your grades. I vow to become a perfect, fluent English speaker. Hey, guys. Hi, Nicole. How's business? Great. We can't keep up with the demand. Wow, I'm impressed. 
How about you? I quit my job as a food critic. Then let me take you out to dinner to celebrate. I'd love that. I'm so glad I quit. It's time for a change. Does that mean you're going to take my advice? Yes. I'm looking for a position as a chef. I might be able to help. I'm sure you have great connections. We'd like to open another restaurant, with you as the head chef and manager. Really? You have that much faith in me? And Giovanni agreed to it? Does he know who I am? Yes, but you know him. He's just worried that you're not Italian. He's prejudiced, isn't he? No, he's afraid that no one will cook as good as his mother did. Ah, I know a way to convince him that Americans can make good Italian food. How's that? You'll see next week. I'll come by one day at lunchtime. Good afternoon, Uncle Giovanni. Since when was I your uncle? What's that? It's twenty pounds of my homemade fettuccine. You want me to buy it? No, I want to make it for you and your customers. Well, our customers never ask for it. They will. I'll put a plate of it on display. Uncle Giovanni, Nicole's fettuccine is out of this world. Taste it. Okay, okay. Hmm, not bad. Not bad? Not bad? Look at how many customers are ordering. That's because it's new. They're curious. No, they're ranting and raving about how great it is. So go be nice to her. Is it the fettuccine you're in love with, or Nicole? You've been acting different since Paris. Well, she's perfect for me. I—I I mean, she's perfect for us. Oh, I get it. Nicole, your fettuccine is very unique. But not as good as your mother's, right? Actually, it's better. What? Are you kidding? No, it was the only dish she wasn't good at, so we could use you as the new head chef. Oh, Uncle Giovanni, that's wonderful! Thank you, thank you. Okay, okay, get back to work. There's someone waiting for you in the kitchen. What's going on here? We're waiting in line to get one of Master Li's Chinese couplets. I got one last year, and I had good luck all year. Master Li, who's that? He's Taipei's most famous calligraphy master. Quick, get in line. I will. I could use some good luck. Whew! I had to wait for almost an hour. To get to the front of the line, you have much patience. Wow, your calligraphy is very beautiful. It was worth the wait. Thank you. Today I'm writing a kind of poem called a Chinese couplet. What does it say? This is an especially famous one. It says, "May the passing days bring you health and longevity." May this season of renewal find you basked in riches. That's very nice. Is it for sale? No, I never sell my artwork. Really? Then what do you do with it? I give it away. Here, this one is for you. Wow! Really? Are you sure? Now I'll have a lucky year. Remember, real luck must be created yourself, and then it cannot be given or taken away. Wow, 
Your fruit looks really fresh. How much are these apples? The apples are thirty NT each. How many would you like? Let's see. Thirty NT is about almost a dollar U.S. What? How about these pineapples? They're two hundred and fifty NT each, but they're not edible. They're only used for worship. Hmm. Two hundred and fifty NT is eight dollars, and you can't even eat them. You're crazy. Wait! Don't go just yet. These bananas are pretty cheap. Only thirty-five NT for this bunch. Now that's more like it. Bananas have lots of potassium too. They're also good for your digestion. Would you like some kiwis too? Are they from Taiwan? They're imported from New Zealand. Four for fifty NT. Nine for a hundred. Okay, I'll take four kiwis. Would you like a bag? That's okay. I'll just throw them in my backpack. Say, do you have any advice on where I can get some Chinese ginseng? Ginseng? You can get that at any Chinese herb store. I know a good one right near here. I can show you if you want. If it's close to here and you don't mind, sure, that would be great. Come with me. Oh hi, I'm Yoranda. My aunt said you wanted some ginseng. Which kind do you want? Uh, what's the difference? Korean ginseng is red. It's more warming. The Western ginseng is white and more cooling. Since it's still kind of cold. I suggest you get the red kind. Well, okay. How much for a pound? We don't sell by the pound here in Taiwan. We sell by the jin. One jin is about one and a third pounds. Okay. Well then, how much is one jin? Ginseng comes in six different grades. It runs from five thousand to thirty thousand NT a jin. Thirty thousand NT for ginseng? Do I have to buy a whole jin? You can get a liang if you want. A liang is one sixteenth of a jin. That would be three hundred and thirty NT. Whew! That sounds more like my price range. I'll take two liang. I'll have my brother cut some for you. This little red fruit looks good. What's it good for? That's a lucky fruit called Hongzhao. People say that if you eat them, you will have your first son very soon. Uh, I'm not even married yet. How about this brown dried fruit? Guiyuan are lucky too. If you eat them. You'll have a very sweet life. And how about these little brown chips? Oh, that's deer horn. That helps you. Um, how should I put it? It's like Viagra. It'll give you power. Oh, I see. Why don't you let me prepare a batch of tonic wine for you? If we use ginseng and deer horn together. It will be even stronger. Tonic wine? What will that do for me? It'll make you feel like King Kong. Just leave it to me. What are those things that you're putting in there? They look like little worms. Actually, it's a kind of fungus. Fungus? I'm supposed to eat fungus? Sure, it's called winter worm summer grass. Worms and grass? That's good for you. It's also a strong tonic. It will bring out your masculinity. I'll give you one liang. How do I use these herbs? Just put the herbs in a bottle, fill it with rice wine, and wait. You can start drinking it in three months. And how will I feel? 
You'll feel like a new man. Trust me. If you have any questions, you can come back and ask my sister. She's a Chinese doctor. She is. Thanks. I'll be back. Our company's weiya is tomorrow night. It's your first Chinese New Year in Taiwan. You must be excited. Excited? What's there to be excited about? It's just another company dinner, right? You have no idea. There's a banquet with prizes, performances, you name it. Really? What kind of prizes? Well, I heard that last year Vivian from accounting won a new car. A new car? You're kidding! No, really. And she told me the secret to winning: wear red underwear. Wear red underwear? Does that really work? Are you going to try it? Of course. I'm not only going to wear red underwear, but I'm going to wear red socks and a red shirt too. Gee, I don't think I own any red underwear, but I can buy some. See how many people are here? Yeah. Do all these people work in the company? Everyone and their dog is here. Other than the employees, our boss Jack invited some friends of the company. Can we just sit wherever we want? Of course not. We have to sit at our assigned seats. I think our table is over there in the back. Hmm. We don't exactly have the best seats in the house, do we? Look who you get to sit next to, Tim from Purchasing. Ew, that weirdo! He really gives me the creeps. Don't worry, I'm also sitting next to you. I just hope he doesn't start bragging again. I can't wait until we get our year-end bonus. Me either. Who decides how much money we get? Our supervisor Lester does. Actually, Lester is kind of like the kitchen god. The kitchen god? What does he do? He just stays in the kitchen and watches you. Before the Chinese New Year, the kitchen god tells his boss whether you were good or bad this year, just like Lester does. Oh no! I did a lot of bad things this year. I hope the kitchen god isn't like Lester. He blabs my mistakes to everybody. Actually, there's a way to keep the kitchen god from telling the bad things you did. What is it? Tell me. Will it work for Lester too? I think so. Just serve a lot of sweet dishes next week. That will make the kitchen god say sweet things about you. Hmm. Are you sure that will work? I already tried giving chocolate to Lester. And what happened? His face broke out, and he said it was my fault. Wednesday, February ninth. Hey, Joyce! What a coincidence! Our seats are right next to each other again. Huh? I guess I'm just lucky. Did you hear what the grand prize is this year? A two-week vacation to America. Wow! Who donated that prize? Funny that you should ask. Actually, it's from one of the companies I work with. You know, I work with some of the largest travel agencies in Taiwan. Oh well, look! Here comes another dish. I think it's chicken. I hope they give him the chicken head. I wish we were so lucky. Actually, the boss just loves Tim. Can you believe it? I heard he saves the company a lot of money. Well, I'm glad he's good for something. Just try to tough it out. The dinner will be over soon. Look, they're going to do the first drawing. It's for a DVD player. Hmm. That must be the DVD player that another one of my friends donated. He owns one of the largest electronic stores in Taipei. They're picking a name. It's 
Daryl from marketing. Rats. Don't worry. There are a lot more prizes. I know because the prizes are all from companies that I work with. Hmm. Daryl doesn't look like the red underwear type. Oh, it looks like Jack is going to make his annual speech. Couldn't he wait until we're finished eating? Yeah, I'm still hungry, but I guess it's kind of rude to keep eating while he's talking, huh? Can you even hear what he's saying? No, he's so far away I can hardly see him. Let's keep eating. Can you turn the lazy Susan for me? I want some more chicken. All that's left is a leg. I gave the head to Tim. Next is a ballet performance, but who is the dancer? I'd swear that's Eddie from Circulation. Since when did Eddie start doing ballet? Not very long, from the looks of it. Look, he has a partner. He's dancing with Jack. Gross. The waya is the one time a year you can make fun of the boss. But I think Eddie is going too far. You're right. They are spinning pretty fast. Aren't they getting dizzy? What if they fall? Oh! Ouch! That must have hurt. How embarrassing! Okay, here's the final drawing. It's for the trip, and the winner is Vivian again. I don't believe it. Our red underwear didn't do any good at all. Well, there are still some consolation prizes. We can go up to the front and pick them up. So, what did you win? A lousy desk lamp, and you? A bar of soap. <laughs> Look at Vivian. She thinks she's the cat's meow. Why don't you go talk to her and find out what her secret was this year? Congratulations, Vivian! You won the grand prize again. Isn't it just great? I just knew I'd win. You did? How? Did you wear red underwear again this year? Not only that. Tell me, tell me, what's your secret? Okay, okay. I'll whisper it to you, but you have to promise not to tell anyone. What? You did that? I think I need a new notebook. Why? Is there some new cool computer out on the market? You bet there is. Feast your eyes on this puppy. That's a notebook. Believe it. It looks more like a toy or a cool briefcase. Look, there's even a built-in handle to carry it with. But it's so thin. There's no way that it comes with a CD-ROM. Oh yes, it does. Look, here it says that the CD-ROM is built in. What other features are listed? It says that it comes in teal and tangerine. Totally cool colors. And it says that it sleeps. You mean it shuts off to save energy? Yep, and it breathes. See? It's not breathing. Yes, it is. Look at the little light. It blinks off and on. Jen, it's not alive. But it does look user friendly. I would look so cool carrying this around. And you'd look so cool dropping it. Ah! What in the world is that smell? The aroma of roasting coffee beans. Smells like you're baking something. What are those? Green beans. They pop and turn brown when you roast them. Cool. But isn't that a hot air popcorn popper? This machine roasts the beans just right. If you roast them too long or the temperature is too hot, the beans will burn. I know. I've tasted burnt coffee before. Yuck. A woman after my own heart. Okay, Mr. Coffee Connoisseur. So, what's the next step in the coffee making process? 
Well, step two is grinding the coffee beans. I've roasted three different types of beans. Let me guess: mocha, mandolin, and Santos. Yep, my own special blend. You can tell by just smelling them. No, I just read the names off the packages. Ha! Cute. Here, these beans are already ground. Now for step three: let the brewing begin. So soon? You have to brew the grinds while they're fresh and drink it immediately for the best flavor. Okay, hurry then. Here's my cup. I can't wait for step four. There is no step four. Yes, there is. Drinking your coffee. Check out these wheels. You bought a compact car? No, I borrowed it. Let me guess, from Sarah. It looks like something she would drive. You guessed right. Besides, the color violet is a little girly for me. I love it. It's so festive. And where did you get that cup? It's got the same logo as the car. I bought it. I got a watch too. The company that sells this car has a car club, where you can buy lots of paraphernalia. Yeah, and meet other drivers of the same car. Cool. I know girls love this kind of car. Look, it's got a sunroof. Imagine a cool, starry night. So you're going to use Sarah's car to go cruising for checks? No, I borrowed it to go shopping. How much are you planning to buy? Well, it's not how much, but what I'm going to buy that matters. I'm going ski shopping. Cool. Can I come? No. The front seat folds down all the way, so there's just enough space for the skis. But not enough space for me. Not unless you lose about a hundred pounds. Billy. <sighs> are you ready to go shopping? Not yet. I'm not finished with my research yet. What research? Reading my fashion magazines. How do you think I know so much about all the latest trends? But they're just ads. Duh, that's the point. The people in the ads are wearing what's in. Plus, there are articles on new trends. And lots of dear Abby sob stories. Hey, I learn a lot from the psychologists who give advice in those columns. No wonder you're such a wacko. Whatever. Smell perfume samples. Hmm, nice. Hey, I like the layout of this page. You mean you like the pictures of the beautiful models? Hello. And the cover is great. The colors are brilliant. Give me a break. You don't care about the colors. You just like the hot babe on the cover. Okay, you got me. So, do you have a subscription? Of course. I'm currently the subscriber of ten different fashion magazines. So, what do you do with all the outdated issues? I guess I'm lending them to you. It's Chinese New Year. That means it's time to eat hot pot. Let's eat the kind that has both spicy and mild broth in one pot. You mean half and half? Yep. That way I can satisfy my craving for spicy food, and you can eat hot pot without burning into flames. Good idea. Let's go. This broth is wonderful. What's in it? Lamb and beef. It will get even tastier when we add the veggies. Hey, watch out! You're using the same spoon for both broths. So? You're getting that hot stuff in my mild broth. You'll be okay. It's just a little bit. Oh, my mouth is on fire! I feel so good. That warm hot pot certainly hits the spot on winter nights. <sighs> I need more water. <laughs>
Ew, gross! You're sweating all over the place. It's your fault for mixing the two broths. You're gonna have a little Montezuma's revenge tomorrow morning. <laughs> Montezuma's not the only one who's going to be getting revenge tomorrow. Good morning, Mrs. Schmidt. I see you're standing on your head again. Hi, Kathy. I'm just doing my morning yoga. You're up awfully early today. I have to finish preparing a paper for my Western Civilization class. How has school been going? You come home so late every night. You're really a hard worker. Actually, I study a lot less here than I did in Taiwan. My classes are great, though. Sociology is the perfect major for me. Your English has really improved in the two months you've been here too. Do you have to work late at the computer company again tonight? No, I'm going to leave the office early today. My annual medical checkup is this afternoon. How much longer will Mr. Schmidt be up in the mountains? He's on a week-long meditation retreat and won't be back until this weekend. You two are so health conscious. Well, we try. Here, I just made some carrot juice. Would you like a glass? Why not? Before you know it, I'll be heading off to the mountains to stand on my head. You don't have to go to the mountains. I stand on my head during my yoga routine every morning. Thanks for the carrot juice, Mrs. Smith. I've got to run to class. Have a good day at school. See you tonight. Mrs. Schmidt. What's happening? You'll never guess what happened today. I went to the doctor after work, and the doctor told me. And the doctor told you to start listening to Bach? No, he told me I'm pregnant. Congratulations! And so I bought all these books on having kids, and and they said you should play classical music. How did you know? They say listening to classical music can make your baby smarter. Does Mr. Schmidt know he's going to become a father? No, and I have no way of getting a hold of him. There's no phone where he's at. Well, he has a surprise waiting for him when he gets back, doesn't he? My older sister Judy will be here soon to help. She already has a boy and a girl of her own. I just saw a red van pulling into the driveway. Is that her? Kim, I'm here. I brought all my old maternity clothes, plus Dave and Alice's baby clothes. It's a little early for those, isn't it? I still have eight months to go. Believe me, the time will fly by. Before you know it, you'll be changing diapers. You have to start preparing. I thought we could turn the upstairs study into a baby room. What do you think about lavender? I'll be back tomorrow with my work clothes. And a gallon of lavender paint. You just sit back and relax. Chris and Jade are dancing with the dancers. Isn't this fun? I have no idea what I'm doing. Just follow the foot movements. Brush left, brush right. Yeah, that's it. Whoa, we're changing partners now. Where do I go? Let the men take the lead. Whoa. Oh no. <laughs> Oops. After the disaster. Thanks for helping me up. Are you okay? I didn't mean to put you in danger. I'm the hazardous one here. I made three people fall over. That takes talent. I'm so humiliated. What's that man saying? Everyone's laughing. He said you obviously prefer Greek comedies to Greek tragedies. What? I don't get it. Many of the slower dances are danced to the lyrics of tragedies. He meant that you turned it into a comedy. Well, I'm glad I made everyone happy. He meant it in a good way. You added a little spice to the performance. I'm glad you guys all have such a good sense of humor. <laughs> of course, that's why I always say, eat, drink, and be Greek. Even if. What's wrong with this sentence? 
Even if I have tried many different ways, I still can't fix the problem. How can we fix this sentence? Even though I have tried many different ways, I still can't fix the problem. Even though. Even though she was a little late, we still waited for her. Even if. Even if she is a little late, we can still wait for her. Even if she had been a little late, we still would have waited for her.